You're listening to Making Money Online with Lisa Johnson, the podcast that tells you what it really takes to build a business and the simple steps to get you there. I'm determined to share with you the reality of easy, simple business marketing tips to make passive income so that you can start making money online. Hello, Lisa Johnson here. How is your day going? Whenever I start this podcast, I feel like I'm a radio host. Can you tell that I have this like entertainer in me that wants to come out? <laughs> like I want to be a TV presenter or a radio presenter. And you can tell because every time I do something like this, I feel completely comfortable and excited as if this is what I was supposed to be doing all along. I hope you're having a nice day, whatever it is that you are doing. Today, I want to talk to you about why there is money in knowing your ideal client, because really important one. I always wonder as well, just as an aside, I always wonder as well where you're listening to this podcast. Like, I want you to email and tell me where you listen to this podcast. Email me at lisa at lisajohnson.com and let me know. I always imagine that you're either in the car listening, going somewhere, or you're out running. And even though I do neither of those things, I'm never in the car listening to a podcast. I'm never running, whether listening to a podcast or not. I still feel that's what you're doing. But you're going to write to me now going, no, I was in the bath or whatever, and it'll be completely different. But I want to know. So let's talk ideal client then. I will admit the first time somebody told me that I had to work out my ideal client, I thought it was a load of rubbish. I nearly swore then, not allowed to swear on here, I don't think. It might stop people seeing it. I just laughed and I thought it was a ridiculous idea and that surely if I worked out my ideal client and I only started talking to this, whatever you call it, avatar, hero avatar, ideal persona, whatever, then no one would want to buy from me apart from those people. And it made me feel like I was pigeonholing myself. And that actually, I was turning away loads of clients that otherwise would buy from me. And surely that's a ridiculous thing to do. But actually, if we're honest about it, it's made a massive, massive difference in both my businesses that I've had so far. So like, if we go back to where I started, I started by having a wedding planning business. And when I started that wedding planning business, I didn't know anything about business, as most people don't when they start the first one that they ever have. I was working in a nine to five. I had five month old twins and I knew that I needed to supplement my income somehow. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to start a business. And so I started this business of wedding planning and I kind of didn't mind who I did weddings for. So if you want a barn wedding, I'm your girl. Want a budget wedding? I'm your girl. You want a really luxury wedding in the Dorchester? Pretty sure I can do it. So I didn't really narrow anything in at all at the beginning. And the problem with that was that everyone that came to talk to me and have a consultation with me, because I had a nice little brand. Now I look back, it wasn't that nice, but for a first business, it was okay. And anyone that talked to me would just, all they cared about was the price. And all they were doing was like interviewing seven or eight wedding planners and going with the cheapest one. So because there was nothing unique about what I was doing, I was a wedding planner. They assumed I could plan weddings. They assumed all these other people they were talking to could also plan weddings. They were just going based on price. And so I was either having to undercut everybody to get the wedding or I wouldn't get it. And so at the end of that first year, when I worked out how much money I was making, I was making like barely anything because I'd undercut everybody to try and get these weddings. And weddings are hard. Like you're on your feet for 48 hours sometimes with no sleep. So it wasn't really worth it for me. And it was only when I got my first business coach and she was like, right, well, you know, who's your ideal client? Who do you want to work for? I was like, what do you mean? And she explained about how, you know, you have to really narrow down who you want to work with and it will change everything. And it massively did. So I worked out that the people I really wanted to plan weddings for were hipster you know, East London hipster brides that wanted an anti-wedding. They just wanted a party. They didn't really care about the actual ceremony bit. It was all about the party. It was all about the fun and doing things in a different, cooler way, very urban. And with that whole aesthetic that goes with that. And so when I worked that out, I started to change everything, like my website, my copy, everything to be based around that. And it was really scary at first because 
for, and obviously my pricing had to go up with that because the kind of budgets that I was looking for were people who were spending about 60,000 to about 250,000 on weddings, not 10 or 20, which is what we were doing before. And so it was scary because for about five months, my old ideal client, well, I didn't really have one, but you know, all of the people that were booking me before weren't booking me anymore. They just weren't. They, I was too expensive for them. They didn't really understand what kind of weddings I was now doing. And my new ideal client hadn't found me yet because I was having to, you know, do all the visibility work and talk about my messaging and that kind of thing. And so there was this period of time where I had no weddings at all. And I thought, oh, I've done the wrong thing. And it's gone all quiet. And now I'll have no weddings instead. But then it happened. And we got this phone call from our ideal client who said, you're exactly what I've been looking for. I've been looking everywhere to find someone who does the exact kind of weddings you explain on your website. Can we have a consultation with you? And she told us at this consultation that she worked for Facebook and her husband-to-be worked for Google. So they're like our perfect clients and they wanted a real hipster urban wedding, but they were willing to spend up to 100000 on this wedding. And we got the gig and they told us that they didn't even interview anyone else because we sounded so much like they were our ideal client that they knew that we were the right planners for them. And then after that, about three months later, we were fully booked for a year and a half just with ideal clients, all of the right budgets. And and our whole business changed and the profitability changed. It was amazing. And that all happened just because we worked out who our ideal client is. And when I started this business, the consulting business, right from the beginning, I knew exactly who my ideal client was. But what I've realized over time is I think it's just as much about what you want to help people with as who you want to work with. And at the beginning, when I used to think about ideal client, I used to just think about it in a, you know, I used to teach people, who do you want to work with? And I used to tell them, don't get this mixed up with market research. It's so different. Market research is when you go out there, you find a gap in the market and you go, oh, I'm going to do this thing for these people because they need it. Whereas ideal client is who you want to work with. It's almost like you're making up a person. And sometimes when you're writing down your ideal client, you do feel like you're just making stuff up. But it's like if somebody walked through the door right now and said, I really need to work with you. Here's the money. Who do you wish that was? Everything about them. Who do you wish they were? And that's what ideal client is. And so I believe it's not just that bit about who do you wish they were, I think the real game changer for my business has been, and for my clients, not just who do you wish they were, but what problem do you wish they had? Because actually what makes you unique and what makes you stand out, especially online, isn't just, this is my ideal client, this is who I want to work with, and making sure everything that you do shows that. But it's also, this is the problem I can solve. And it's very niche as they say in America, the niches are in the riches. No, the other way. The riches are in the niches. But we can't use that phrase because we say niche here and it doesn't work. But there is something about the more narrow you go with your ideal client and what you want to help people with. So that second part, which I think is really important, the more likely you will stand out. So with me, when I first started, I knew what kind of people I wanted to help. You know, when I was first doing business consultancy, I knew I wanted to help people that well, where I was a couple of years before and and feeling really burned out. But lots of people wanted to do that. And I knew what kind of client they were, but I could help them with so many things that it was really hard to kind of narrow that down. And I always think of it as like, if you're in a Facebook group and someone says, oh, I'm really looking for someone to help me with XXX, you want your name to come up. And the problem with me knowing exactly who my ideal client was, was it was everybody that said, I have a business, I'm not making enough money, I really want to work less time, can anyone help me? If somebody wrote that in a Facebook group, yes, my name might come up, but so would about 150 others. (laughs) It's like when someone says about mindset coaches, I'm looking for a mindset coach. Yeah, hundreds of people, you know, people saying, oh, I worked with this person, I worked with this person. And I realized very quickly that I needed to narrow it right down and that it didn't matter that I could help lots and lots of people with lots of different things, what mattered was that I choose one of those things to be the main thing that I help people with. And so that became passive income. That became my strength, the thing that I knew the most about. And I went and studied as much as I could 
about passive income. And I did, you know, every course and every program and read every book you can possibly imagine because I wanted to become the best in the world at passive income. And that meant letting go of all the other things I was good at. You know, I can help people start a business. I can help people with money mindset. I can help people with so many things like visibility in social media. But actually, the thing that I realized I was best at and that I wanted to be best at because it was more fun for me was the passive and semi-passive income streams like courses, memberships, that kind of thing. Once I niched that, boy, did that make a difference. If someone now writes in a Facebook group, I'm looking for someone that can help me with courses, memberships, passive income streams, my name and maybe two others will come up because I'm known for that one thing. So I think it's not just about like the kind of person you want to help and where they shop and, you know, do they have kids and where do they live and all of those kind of things. I think it's even narrower than that. I think you have to work out the pain point. I don't even like the word pain point because I think it's a bit exploitive, but the problem that they have that you can help them with. And I think that's what makes the biggest difference. You think about it. You think about when you are out there and you're looking for someone to help you with any kind of problem, whatever it is, you're going to go with the one that best describes you as a person and what your issue is, like those two things. So if I was looking for someone to help me recover from trauma of bullying, for instance, so there will be people out there that say, I'm a mindset coach and I can help you with any issues that are holding you back. Great. I know that they're looking for someone like me who needs a mindset coach because I think there are some issues that are holding me back. You might go to them, but it's a bit vague, isn't it? Whereas if someone says, I'm a mindset coach, but I specialize in helping people who are victims of bullying with trauma so that it stops holding them back so that they can make more money in their business. I'm much more likely to go to that person, even if she's so much more expensive than everybody else, because I know that her specialism is my exact problem and I need her solution. And I always describe it as like if you were walking into, let's say you had really, really bad pain in your tooth, like real bad dental pain, and you walked into a pharmacy and there were five bottles of painkillers on the shelf and four of them were about a pound, one pound, one pound fifty. And they said, stops pain quickly. And then one of them was eight pounds, but it says, stops dental pain within a one minute. You're going to pay the eight pounds. You don't care because it solves your problem. You don't care that it's eight times as much as the others. It speaks directly to the problem that you have. And I think us as marketers, as people that want to sell our solutions, need to be speaking directly to that one person about the problem they have with the solution that we have. And then it doesn't really matter what you charge. They will pay you whatever you want because they know that you can help them. So this is why it's going to make you more money in the long run. Pigeonholing yourself will make you more money in the long run. And when you're trying to like work out who this ideal client is, because lots of people have that trouble, like, well, I don't even know who my ideal client is. Don't know who I want to work with. Like have a think about a few different things. And remember that this person doesn't have to be exactly like, let's say you wrote a big long list. They work in advertising and they are 27 and her name is this. And, you know, we do give them a name because it helps us to visualize who they are. And this is their problem. And they sometimes go on holiday. And this is the kind of place they like to go on holiday on. And you write a hundred sentences about this person so that you can really get them in your head. Don't expect that that person exists. Expect that people who are a bit like that person exist. So there's going to be people on the periphery. So with the wedding business that I had, yes, I wanted a really cool hipster bride that worked at Google, lived in East London and, you know, wanted a warehouse wedding. But in reality, I would get people who were more like a wannabe hipster. They wanted that cool wedding, but they weren't quite as cool as my ideal client was. Or they wish they lived in East London, but they actually didn't. They lived in the home counties. You know, there would be people on the periphery of it that were nearer to that ideal client than if I'd said nothing at all, because then I'd just get everybody. And that's okay. And it doesn't mean if you say, this is my ideal client, that you will never work with anyone that isn't that again. I can't tell you the amount of weddings I did in Malta, which is where I'm from, that were completely not my ideal client. You know, they had doves and chocolate fountains and all sorts of things that I don't really like but it doesn't matter because 
they paid a lot of money and it meant I could go to Malta. I just didn't put them all over my social media because that wasn't my ideal client. And when we know who our ideal client is, what we want to do is we want to attract more of those people by showing on our social media and on our website and in our copy everything about them because then they'll see that we work with those kind of people and they will be more attracted to us. So have a think in a Facebook group, what do you want to be known for? Yes, you can do lots of things. We know that everyone's multi-talented these days, but what is the one thing that you want to be known for that you will give up all of the other things for? What's the problem that you find really easy to solve? And have a think about who you've liked working with in the past. If you're really stuck, who have you worked with that you've loved? Is there a pattern to the people that you've worked with that you've really enjoyed? Is it the problem that they have? Or is it something about them? Is it a version of you? Usually it is. So my ideal client for the wedding business was like a cooler, richer version of me. (laughs) It's who I wanted to be. And my ideal client in this business is me a couple of years ago. Someone that's doing okay in business, but they're spending too much time on it and they want more freedom. So that's why they want passive or semi-passive income. So I can identify with that person because I was her and or him. And so it's easy for me to be able to talk about the symptoms of their problem, like what they're doing that they recognize there's an issue. Working too many hours would be a good one. You know, not seeing their kids as much as they want to. These are the symptoms of the problem and I have the solution. And so I talk about all three the problem, the symptoms, and the solution. And you need to be doing the same thing. So when you know who that ideal client is, you need to change everything. On your website, you need to make sure all the pictures would only identify, would really attract that person in. You need to make sure your copy resonates with them. On the wedding website that we did when we changed it, we put a quote from Back to the Future because we wanted those geeky, nerdy you know, sci-fi brides that loved that era. And so this quote was from Back to the Future and it said, where you're going, where we're going, you don't need roads. And so many people said to us, I knew as soon as I read that quote that you were going to be the wedding planner for me. Just from that, because it resonated with them. They got that I would get them. Whereas lots of wedding, you know, lots of brides, lots of couples said, we don't really understand what that means on your website. And that's brilliant because it meant that they weren't the right person. And one of the biggest reasons that you know you've done well on narrowing down your ideal client and your messaging is if you don't attract people. If there are people that say, well, I just don't think you're quite right for me. That means you're doing a really good job because if people don't think you're quite right for them, it means the people that are attracted to you are going to be even more so. If everybody likes your brand and messaging, that means it's weak. It shouldn't be for everybody. We shouldn't have everybody like what we say and what we do. So don't be afraid to be polarizing in what you do, but also don't be polarizing just for the sake of it. We've all seen those people that put things on social media, grenades, I like to call them, the grenades on social media, where they put things on just to blow things up. They'll put something really controversial on that they probably don't even really think just to get engagement. Don't be that person. Be the person that actually uses polarization for the things you really think and believe. So if you want certain types of people to work with you, say that. If you believe certain things, say that. Don't be afraid of it. It's okay to repel 50%. Jeez, it's okay to repel 95% of your audience because you only need 5% to work with you to be able to make a hell of a lot of money. So don't be afraid of being polarizing. And remember that for some clients, this one tweak of ideal client work has changed their entire business and got them completely booked out. So do do the work on your ideal client first, especially before you do any kind of branding. And we will probably talk about branding in a later episode of the show. That's me for today. Have an amazing day, whatever it is you're doing for the rest of it. I will speak to you very soon. Thank you for listening to Making Money Online with Lisa Johnson. If you'd like to get hold of my guide to launching, go to lisajohnson.com forward slash launch and let's get you making money online.